Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Millerick. I hope that you had a wonderful vacation. I missed you all so much. And I have some news for you. So you might have already noticed by now that you will be doing your specials through recorded videos, okay? It'll be the same as when Ms. Millerick Zoomed with you, except it will be a pre-recorded video that you're watching. So we'll still be exploring the world together and learning all the new science things there are to learn, okay? You just won't be able to ask me questions right then and there. If you ever did have a question though, you know that you can try to reach out to me on Google Classroom or through my email, all right? So let's get started with today's lesson. So we are going to catch right up where we left off, talking about erosion and ways to control erosion, okay? We are gonna go through these slides all together. We are going to go over various erosion controls that are already all over the world right now, being used daily. So let's just review. Erosion controls are when people try to stop or control erosion using many different methods. You will check out the slides for information about the different erosion controls. And then at the bottom, there's just this little note. Um, in a few weeks, we will play this game called Erosion Explosion. So make sure you pay attention so you can play the game. So the first one is called planting more vegetation. And there is a description of what vegetation is in yellow. And then there's a picture of what planting vegetation looks like. So you may have gone to the beach before and noticed that there are weeds or grass or shrubs, whatever you wanna call it at the beach, right? At the beach here in Winthrop, we have that. It's actually there on purpose. It's not an accident. It didn't grow on its own. It's actually there for a reason, to control erosion. Listen up, I'm gonna read this blurb to you guys. People help stop erosion by planting vegetation. Vegetation is another word for plants and shrubs. The roots act like a hand that holds the soil in place. This stops the soil from being carried away by wind or water. So we can't see underneath the sand, but I want you to imagine what is underneath the sand. What part of this grass? The roots, yes, the roots are under the sand and like a hand, the roots are just holding onto the sand or the soil, right? And it's holding it in place so that when waves and wind come, the sand does not get carried away. And then at the bottom it says, this beach grass was planted to prevent erosion. What I want you to do is pull this piece of paper out of your packet that I sent home. If you don't have this yet, that's okay. You can kind of just do your writing and your drawing directly in your science journal. What we will do every time we explore a different type of erosion control today is we will describe it in a few words or a full sentence. You will draw a picture of what it looks like to you, or you can use the picture that was in the last slide. And then you're going to check off what does it control. So we'll be doing this for the five different erosion controls that we go through today. So we just went over planting vegetation. Think about beach grass, okay? It's there for a reason. Planting vegetation means planting shrubs and weeds so that the roots hold the soil in place. Or you could even write the sand in place, okay? What you will do is you will pause the video. You will take as much time as you need to write down this description, draw what it looks like using crayons or colored pencils, nice and colorful, right? And then you're also going to check off what does it control. In this case, this erosion control controls wind and water. All right, so go ahead and pause the video. Press play when you're ready to learn about the next one. All right, the next erosion control on our list are windbreaks. When farmers plant rows of trees to protect against high winds, it is called windbreaking. The trees are usually planted around the edge of a field. Wind breaks are also home to many animals, including birds. So I love this picture. I love showing this picture to my second graders every year because it's like a bird's eye view of what a wind break looks like. This picture was probably taken from a plane or a helicopter or a drone, something up in the sky looking down at it. And you could see how perfectly these patterns are laid out, right? They're, the trees are in nice straight lines. And you wanna imagine that this is done at farms, 
okay? So that the trees stand tall and they block the wind from ruining the crops or the land. What you'll do now is you'll go back to your comparing erosions solution worksheet. And now we are going to fill out the windbreak portion. So what I wrote in the most simplest sentence I could think of was, Windbreaks are rows of trees that protect crops from heavy wind. You can write whatever you want, or you can copy my sentence. Remember afterwards, you're going to draw a picture of what a windbreak looks like, and then check off wind. Pause here and press play when you're ready for the next one. Third on our list are levees, and in parentheses, you'll see that it says dikes, because some parts of the country might call these dikes. We have two pictures of what a levee looks like. Um, the first picture over here on the left is the angle as if we're standing on the levee, okay? And the second picture is, looks like a river or a pond and we're looking at the levee from afar. So you could see how high up it is, right? I'll read the sentence to you. It says, levees are mounds built to control water levels. It is usually made from earth and materials and often runs parallel to the path of a river. I want you to think about those two words, earth materials. So that means that levees are usually made from something you would find on the planet, like dirt or clay or wood. Looks like there's pebbles on the top of this one, right? And basically, it's like a wall that controls the water levels. Sometimes these water levels might rise, but it'll never go higher than the levee, right? So in the first picture, it looks like it's protecting a forest. And in the se second picture, it looks like the water levels are being protected from a neighborhood. On your worksheet, you can write a few words or a full sentence. I wrote that levees are mounds of dirt that help control water levels of ponds and rivers. You will draw your picture and you will check off water because levees control water erosion. So pause here and get that done. Press play when you're ready to move on. Next are river dams. River dams are built to slow the speed and flow of water. They also catch sediments from further erosion. Dams can also help control the soil erosion of riverbanks. So lots of information that I just read to you. Let's look at this picture of a river dam to start. All right, you can clearly see that the river starts at the top of the picture. It's very, very wide when it comes down here and hits this concrete river dam. And then you might have an observation. You might notice the size of the river has changed. It has become much narrower. We use that word narrow when we talk about rivers, right? That's because this river dam controls the flow of the water. Also that water will go through the center of the river dam and now it is narrower. Some river dams might also catch sediments, that word sediments right there basically just means anything that could be flowing in the river water, like rocks, sticks, dirt, things that would carve through the river and make it bigger or deeper, get caught up in these river dams sometimes, right? And that way the water continues to flow at a more controlled pace. You can go ahead and get started on your worksheet. I wrote that river dams are man-made walls, built to control the flow of river water. Write your sentence, draw your picture, and then you're checking off water. River dams control water erosion. Pause and get that done. Play when you're ready. Lastly, seawalls. And I like to say seawalls for last because once we get in the flow of really understanding what erosion controls are, poof, then we're hit with one that we know about, right? Seawalls are all around Winthrop. We are almost completely surrounded by ocean water. So most of the time, if you go to the edge of Winthrop, whether it's Winthrop Beach or Ural Beach or Donovan Beach, or if somebody's house might be on the water, most of the time you're going to see some type of seawall. 
whether it's a really big sturdy concrete one like this or something a little bit smaller. Sea walls are built where the sea changes the landforms of the coast. The purpose of a sea wall is to protect coasts from the actions of tides and waves. Most sea walls are made from reinforced concrete, steel, or boulders. And before we move on and we write and we draw sea walls, I want you to think about places where you have seen sea walls and what they look like. All right, because this one in the front of the picture, it's a different shape than any sea walls that I've ever seen. But this one in the far back, hmm, that reminds me of a seawall that I've seen. Hmm. There you go. Lastly, seawalls, concrete walls built along the ocean to protect against tides and waves. Pause so you can write and draw. And this time we're checking off both wind and water because seawalls can control against that wind during storms and the big, big waves. Press play when you're done. So if you don't finish this today, that's okay. I know it was a lot of work. Either way, I do want you to glue it into your science journal. It's probably going to take up two pages, just like I have here. So if you need to, you can. When you are done doing that, I do have an independent activity for you. Um, so this will be something that you can look at on your own, you will have access to, but I'll read the directions to you anyways. It says, if you enjoy learning about erosion controls, check out the following videos. You will learn how these controls work, how they're made, and what real life erosion controls look like. When you're done in your science journal, draw a picture of your favorite one. And as you go through the slides, you will see there are different videos. This is about levees. This one is also about levees. This one is about sea walls. This one is about river dams. And then lastly, we have a video about wind breaks. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today about erosion controls. Um, please send me your work. I would love to see it. And I hope you have fun. Bye guys.